today we are back inside a million lords and i'm going to share with you guys eight tips that i wish i knew when i first started playing but first what's going on guys cheers okay now the first thing i want to point out here is that clearly i am still a new player in million lords and my previous video if you missed that definitely check it out because it'll really provide a lot of context as to what million lords actually is but my previous video was actually my first time playing the game so i am by no means an expert player here but i have definitely learned a lot since my first video now, the first thing I want to talk about here is leveling up your cities and in particular your main city now this you can tell is my main city because it has these little shields that are orbiting around the city if you take a look at any of my other cities you're gonna see that those don't have that little animation nor do they have this sort of spiky insignia on the ground around it okay so that's how you can tell what your main city is and the cool part about this main city is that you don't actually have to worry about defending this city there's no way that you can actually actually attack another player's main city so for example if I zoom out here and I look for another player's main city which is actually right nearby we can see this player's name is Ignis sport and if I come over here there's literally not even an option to attack this player city it doesn't exist you can't possibly do it but for other cities that don't have the shields around them you can actually launch an attack because of this it is not necessarily a priority to upgrade your main original city because you're not going to be getting much benefit out of the defense capabilities of the city however you will get benefits out of the troop production and the gold production as well so there is still a benefit to leveling up that city it just doesn't seem as important to me as a new player compared to the other cities that I have and like even still both of these cities are level 60 and I can level up my other cities beyond the level of my main city so it's not like that's a bottleneck similar to other games so keep that in mind the second tip I want to give you guys has to do with your quests and achievements if you take a look at the top of the screen here it says attack and win three fights and if you tap on that you're going to be presented with three screens the first is your daily rewards this is going to be your daily login reward so every day that you log in you can see there's a timer until your next one whenever you log in there will be a new reward that you can acquire and logging in every week is really important because you are going to get higher quality gear that you can see on the right here so on your seventh day you get a random piece of green gear on your 14th day it's blue purple and then legendary which obviously legendary equipment very important very powerful here in million lords so you get free stuff just for logging in every day the second tab right here is your daily quests and here you can see that completing your daily quests is going to give you a certain number of sapphires and these sapphires are premium currency here in million lords as you can see I have an absurd amount of sapphires over here but you can get some sapphires every single day just by doing these quests and these are pretty simple quests and then finally the top right corner is your achievements and these achievements also give you some of that premium currency those sapphires you can see off on the right here and the sapphires are going to be super important for a lot of these small tasks in the game and here I can actually claim a single sapphire for free which is nice but there's a lot you can do with these sapphires to improve your war strategy including getting your hands on some limited time bundles some chests jewel boxes and things of that nature as well as the advisors which we're going to talk about advisors later in the video I really wish I knew more about these when I first started the game but all of that to say always do your daily quests and complete achievements when you can now another way that you can get free stuff in million lords is by using my promo code on the screen here the way that you can redeem it is by coming in here tapping on the gear icon in the top right corner and then tapping on the promo code button if you use my promo code in game you'll get a couple of free goodies including a free city skin which typically costs a couple of hundred sapphire and of course the only way that you can get these free things is by giving million lords a try if you guys actually haven't played the game yet this video is sponsored by million lords so there will be a link in the description below and in the pinned comment you can download the game with my link it's absolutely free and it really helps out my channel a ton because generous sponsors like million lords help me do what I do here on YouTube with that out of the way let's move on to tip number three which has to do with your skills here the way that you can access your skills is by tapping on your portrait in the top left corner and then clicking on this little leaf icon and this will show you all of your skills now as you can see here first of all I've actually made a pretty big mistake I'll talk about that in just a minute but as you can see I've currently focused all in on my guardian skill pretty much all in there's a couple of points scattered in other places but you can see a majority of my skill points have gone into guardian which means I have focused primarily on defense at the time of recording this video typically in million lords it seems to be the case that all of the best players tend to adopt either a more offensive or defensive strategy in the game and this is because your skill points are very limited and you only get new skill points every once in a while when you actually level up your account by getting more experience okay here you can see I'm level 56 still very much a new player but because skill points are so hard to come by especially the farther you get into the season you're really going to be limited by which 
which of these skills you can invest in okay most likely you're gonna have trouble spreading your skill points all over the place and you will want to focus on either offense or defense I was away for a couple of days so I shifted all my skill points to defense but when I first started playing during the season I was a little bit more emphasized on offense so it really just comes down to your play style you really can go either way at the start of a season you can either go all in on offense and just try to dominate everybody nearby or you can capture a lot of the level one early game cities and then go all in on defense and just hold down those cities to the best of your ability the strategy that you go with is really going to depend on the type of player that you are now earlier I said that I made a massive mistake here with my skill points and that is true and that leads us into tip number four from what I can tell the two most important skills here are both fearless and brave and the reason for this is because as you can see leveling up these skills gives you an increase in your troop survival when either attacking or defending and this is such a good skill that there's literally a cap on how high that you can bring these skills so effectively what this means is if you have an offensive strategy then going all in on fearless is going to give you more troops back when you're attacking other player cities and likewise brave is just the opposite when players are attacking you you're going to be able to save a lot more of your troops and have a lot of them survive so really if you're going to focus your skill points on anything it would be going all in on both of these until they reach 90 and then you can start to distribute your stats more towards either the offensive skills or onto the defensive skills now as you can see the reason i said that i messed up is because i put a majority of my skill points into guardian which i would probably be better off putting into brave so that way i would actually get more troops back for when i log in after players take some of my cities but the good news is that you can always reset your skills okay so here you can see I actually have a free skill reset I can go ahead and use that and boom it gives me all 55 of my skill points back and as you can see that there's one skill point for every level on my account I'm level 56 obviously you start at level one so you don't have any skill points when you start but for every level after that you're going to get a single skill point so what I'm going to do here is as you can see you have to at least have guardian or recruiter to level five before you can invest in brave and same thing here for fearless what that means is I'm going to bring recruiter to level five so for five skill points I've now unlocked both fearless and brave but there's one other thing to keep in mind here and as you can see I actually already have a little bit of benefit here in both of these skills so for example they start at 50 percent but you can see that right now I have 58 percent total why is that well eight percent is actually coming from some of my equipment and if I tap my inventory in the bottom right corner here you can see that there's a bunch of different skills that I get down here just from the equipment that I have equipped on my account and if I tap this plus five you can see all of the stats that I'm getting from this gear so if we come back to our skills here my fearless is currently at 58 percent and so as I add skill points I only need 16 skill points to get this to 90 but what happens in the future if I get better gear that gives me more fearless skill points well then I'm actually wasting some of these skill points right so you want to make sure that you don't over invest in these skills because the highest they can go is 20 but you don't need 20 right like if you have any amount of gear at all that gives you something here then you're wasting those skill points so make sure that you don't ever exceed 90 percent here for both of these skills so I'm gonna put 12 points in a fearless which gets me to 82 percent down the line maybe I'll get better gear that's gonna push this over 90 and then I'll have to reset my skills if I want to get value there but I only need eight skill points to get 82 percent for brave because I'm getting 16 already from my gear so now I have 30 points left over and now I can decide do I want to invest into some of my production for example like getting more gold production over time or do I want to focus more on defense or offense it really comes down to what I'm going to do as I move forward into the season so for me I'm going to put 20 points into Guardian and then I'm gonna put five points into salvager now is this the best configuration probably not like I said I'm still a relatively new player but the point is you do want to focus on fearless and brave especially at the beginning of the season because conserving troops is very important and that will snowball into the late game it's also important to keep in mind that as you spend sapphires to reset your skills like let's say I do this again you'll see that resetting my skills another time is gonna cost 200 sapphires so you don't want to keep resetting them over and over again because it does cost more and more moving on to tip number five this has to do with the amount of time it takes to actually attack a player city 
so here we can see this player morco 28 if i want to launch an attack it would make sense to launch it from one of two places i would want to attack it either from my level 65 city or my level 55 city now the primary reason for this is because these are the closest cities to the target that i'm going to hit and the more distance your army has to travel the longer it's going to take to march towards that city and the player that you're attacking is going to get a notification saying hey there's an attack incoming and so you want the smallest amount of time possible to give them a short warning window that way they don't just regroup a bunch of their troops and put them all into the city that you're attacking because once you launch an attack you can't actually stop it okay at least not from what i've seen i've never seen a way to do that so make sure you're launching an attack from the closest possible city but it's also important to remember that the number of troops that you're going to be attacking with is going to determine how much time that attack is going to take so if i send 32.2 million troops to this city it's going to take a minute and 51 seconds to actually march there if i attack the city from my level 55 city here i only have 3.25 million in that city and that takes one minute and nine seconds so really you want to send as many troops as you can to get a resounding victory but just keep in mind that it's going to be really slow if you're sending a ridiculous amount and because you can't actually stop the attack once you've launched it it's really important to actually scout that city before you do so because that'll give you a better idea as to whether or not you can actually win so if I actually regroup all my troops into this city here, then I can go ahead and launch the attack. But right before I do, I want to send another scout just to make sure. Okay. And really quick, one way that you can get a lot of troops into one city really quickly is by tapping on this icon right here. It's called the regroup option. Now this does cost two Sapphire, but what it will do is take all of your cities that are in this radius. And it will basically automatically send all of your troops to the target city. Now, the other way that you can use this skill is by getting the advisor called the commander and the commander for 30 days 800 sapphire you get infinite regroups and there's a larger regroup range so it actually affects more cities in that circle if you have the commander unlocked so again commander great value if you're going to be using the regroup feature a lot okay so if it's two sapphire per regroup that means you have to do this 400 times to break even right so keep that in mind there are of course other benefits like the scouting the multi scouting feature which is right here speaking of scouting tip number six has to do with actually scouting every single time because you can get a lot of important information when you actually do so so this is that city that i just scouted that you saw and you can see that that enemy city has 34.2 million troops and i have 32.2 million and so you might look at this and say okay well uh, you know, I only have a few less troops than him. And so if I take my 13.2 million over here and then I send them over to this city, like maybe that'll be enough to actually complete the attack. But if you take a look at the report here, you can see that he actually has 48% extra defense here from his skills. Plus all the other bonuses, including the level of the city gets him to 142 million on defense. Okay. And so suddenly my 32 million doesn't really seem that impactful right now. Of course, I will have offensive stat bonuses as well for my equipment and things like that, but it's not just about number of troops here. So you definitely want to scout so you can understand what's going to be happening here. Of course, as you can see, there are other defensive stats that are going to be taken into account here. So please keep that in mind and always be scouting. Another really important piece of information when actually attacking another player doesn't come from the scout report, but it does come from actually attempting to launch the attack. And what you can see here is if I go to launch my attack on the city if you tap the experience button here you'll see how much experience i could seek to gain from actually attacking this player so i actually have a 200 experience multiplier if i do attack this player and you can actually see that off to the right here as well so if you can especially at the beginning of a season you really want to make sure that you're attacking players that give you that bonus experience that's going to help you progress a lot faster with leveling up your account moving on to tip number seven this has to do if you end up in a situation where you find that everyone nearby your city is just too powerful there's just no way for you to break out of the little corner that you find yourself in what you can do is use an item called the fresh start and what this does is it essentially allows you to kind of start over in another section of the map because if you actually zoom out here the map for a season is literally massive like it is so so big like it is literally huge it is loading in as i'm scrolling here okay and so by using a fresh start you can literally start over somewhere else and the hope is that the players that you start over next to are going to be a bit easier for you to defeat in battle 
than where you currently are at this moment. And finally, tip number eight has to do with your equipment. And I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier in the video, but each piece of equipment has certain bonuses to your skill. So if we take a look at my amulet of the hunter, you'll see that we get 10% of the rusher skill and 2% of the fearless skill. And both of those skills are a little bit more offensive in nature, right? Like rusher is moving your troops across the map and fearless gives you bonus survival rate when you're attacking. Okay. So this is a more offense oriented piece. And so it's not necessarily the best thing that you would want to use if your cities are getting attacked, right? Like it's not, it's not meant for that. And so what's important to know about equipment is that you're going to have a lot of equipment as you open up more chests here in the game. And some of the equipment is going to be focused on offense. And some of the equipment is going to be focused on defense. And so depending on what you're actually doing at that moment, you're going to want to switch your equipment to what is best for that given scenario. Now, if there is no fighting happening and you need troops, you could do what's best for production, either for troops or for gold, or maybe you could do some sort of combination of both, or you could just equip your highest tier for every slot there. If you want just to get the most total stats, but always remember to swap your gear, depending on what you're actually doing, unless you have the ability of getting your hands on the weapon master. And for a thousand Sapphire, the weapon master will actually do this for you automatically for 30 days. This is super valuable here. It says automatically use your best items, depending on the situation. So if you have the weapon master active, then when you launch an attack, it'll automatically use your offensive gear. If you're being attacked, you will automatically switch to your defensive gear. If there's no fighting going on at all, you'll use your production gear, so on and so forth. So weapon master is super, super valuable. If you can get your hands on it, it is a really nice quality of life thing. You don't need this, right? Like if you're free to play, you don't need this because you can just do these things manually, right? But it is nice and convenient to get your hands on it when you can. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it today for million Lords. If you enjoy the video, drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm. So other million Lords players might see it. I do want to take another moment to thank million Lords for sponsoring today's video. If it weren't for generous sponsors like million Lords, I wouldn't be able to do what I do here on YouTube. So it really helps out the channel a ton. If you give the game a try, there will be a link in the description below. The game is hundred percent free. You can use my promo code to get free goodies, including the city skin. Of course, while you're down there, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a video and comment down below your thoughts on million Lords. Have you tried it yet? I've actually gotten a lot of positive feedback from you guys about million lords a lot of you guys actually seem to be really enjoying the game which i love to hear because it is a bit different than a lot of the other city builder games we play here on the channel so it's always nice to try something new let me know if you tried the game in the comment section below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace